This is the pre-lab video for the principles of systems and chemical equilibrium looking at Le Chatelier's principle. So in case you haven't had this in the lecture yet, um, Le Chatelier's principle deals with systems in equilibrium. So we know that you know when re reaction rates forward and backward are equal, we get an equilibrium where we don't get a net change in the compound. And that's going to be dictated by the equilibrium constant, that ratio of reactants and products, and <coughs> the uh, law of mass action. So we already sort of know how to do that. We've done that in previous labs. So now the question is, well, what if we add, um, so we have a system in equilibrium and we add something or we take away something. How does the equilibrium uh, shift to reflect that? And so this is Le Chatelier's principle, the idea that if you have a system in equilibrium and you disrupt it, um, you will get a shift in the equilibrium to reestablish this equilibrium. So for instance, the most common example, let's say we have this reaction A and B, it's in equilibrium to form C. And it's at equilibrium, and then we chuck in a whole bunch more A. Okay, so that reaction will uh, shift to the right away from the uh, addition of the reactant. In this case, B, which we haven't added any B, uh, the net concentration of B is going to go down because it's going to shift to the right. And so this is one way you can, you know, make sure that reactions go to completion or that you use all the very expensive starting materials by adding an excess of the other to make sure it's driven to the thing. So. Another example would be if you were to take away C, let's say it's a precipitate or it bubbles away as a gas. So that will also cause the equilibrium to keep shifting to the right to keep trying to reestablish it and will uh, go until uh, potentially until the equilibrium is reestablished or you run out of A or B. And then finally, temperature can cause a shift. Um, we can sort of think of uh, heat as a, as a chemical reagent. It can either be a product if the reaction is exothermic, and if it's endothermic, we think of it as a reactant. And so then we should be able to judge if we heat a reaction or cool a reaction, what it would do to the shift in the equilibrium. So, you know, if it's product and you were to heat it, actually you would hurt the reaction. Whereas if you could cool that reaction, pull that heat away, perhaps the equilibrium could uh, uh, be shifted more to product. Okay. So, so this lab is going to look at that, and it's, you know, really there's basic, uh, this lab really has not a lot of instructions in the video because it's really what we call a qualitative lab. You're going to uh, mix various things as described in the lab manual. Uh, you have four different experiments, and then the idea is that you have to interpret them uh, based on Le Chatelier's principle and, and, and your observations. Okay, so this is a lab where you need to be very careful about uh, describing what happens um, and uh, careful in your observations. Okay, and the lab manual goes into some good detail, um, and you'll also know from your lecture. We don't do too many of these lectures where we have uh, these uh, uh, sort of qualitative experiments. So the real key here is uh, careful observation. Okay, so you have these four different ones. It's pretty much pretty straightforward compared to what's in the uh, lab manual. Uh, in terms of objectives, this is really a reaction performance, uh, interpreting data. Uh, you're going to do a little bit of acids and bases. We'll do a lot more uh, when we do pH experiments a little bit later. Uh, and then sort of adapt experiments to be able to carry out. You know, you may have to change a few things to see what happens. Uh, in terms of change in the lab manual, uh, we're going to use the hot plates instead of the Bunsen burners. So that'll be the key uh, on those experiments where we, you do some temperature differences. Um, but other than that, it's pretty much pretty straightforward. You'll work in pairs. Um, it should be a relatively straightforward lab to get everything done. Again, interpretation becomes the more difficult component. Then finally, safety-wise, we are going to be using some strong acids and bases. Gloves are probably recommended. You don't want to get it on your clothes or on yourself. Also, um, the cobalt, we're going to be using some cobalt solutions. Let's go ahead and put those all into a, a waste beaker so that we can dispose of them together. Cobalt, not something necessarily supposed to go down the sink, although this is still pretty low concentrations.